What's good guys? It's Cream and welcome to Cream's World. If you got a county more I'm tell you, I mean, I'm the only nigga you ever seen with Brighton, Alabama. I mean, with this real boy, I'm tell you, you can rub this bitch down. You feel me? Then I use Dawn. <laughs> Dawn, you know what I mean? See him with his bottle of Jack Daniels. Shout out to Jack Daniels. Hey, man, please. Sponsors, if you, you know what I mean? Sponsors, hey, if you hey. know what's good for you. Oh, my phone. Don't you know what you made this house a happy home. Happy home. Things ain't got no better child that got his own. Hey guys, this is my interview with Black Montana. I was down in Atlanta. Uh, he's an artist from Alabama by way of Atlanta. I hope you guys enjoy our interview. We're gonna start out with the studio shenanigans or should I say the kitchen shenanigans. If you guys like this video, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, comment below. Just let me know how you enjoyed this interview. But uh, yeah, just keep on watching <laughs> just to see what we got into. And I definitely got a county marble tie, you know what I mean? I'm the only nigga you ever seen with Brighton, Alabama, you know what I mean? With this real marble tie, you can rub this bitch down. You feel me? Then I use Dawn. <laughs> Dawn, you know what I mean? And I only do this to make your counters look real big, actually glistening, you know what I mean? They got my hand replenished and exfoliated. You did that. That man, now hold on, now come, come, for, come verse with me. Okay. While I water with you. Now what we are doing, we are making the finest of lasagna with the sweet canola oil. Avocado oil. You know what I mean? Oh my gosh. I need a top for this shit. Yeah, you let do. Let it simmer, you, you know what I mean? You do, you do. I'm the only hood nigga who let his, let his food simmer, my nigga. Right. Simmer, cuz, with the big S. All right, guys, this is Cream. You guys know, as usual, welcome to Cream's World. I'm sitting in the studio with Black Montana, a.k.a. Black. Montana. Black. What's going on, Black? Man, cuz they're the fun really. I'm kicking big play on, you know what I mean? <laughs> shit, no shrimp shits, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Man, I feel real special to be sitting in the studio with you right now. Like, yeah. some areas, some would consider you a legend. Hey, man, in my city, in my state, we're to the world I'm yet to come, and it's coming. <laughs> I'm coming, Jenna. You know what I mean? Right. So, first of all, you know, let's we're going to start out with, like, just the regular questions people ask in interviews. So, they call you Black Montana. Why, mm -hmm. why is that? All right, well, Montana is basically because... That's my first name in the lifestyle, and you know what I mean? My sperm donor was infatuated with the movie Scarface and the Montana lifestyle, so he felt that should be my name and what they called me. Boom, mother wasn't very into that, so you know what I mean? She named me Brandon. Okay, Montana Brandon Barnes came along, and then Dale Forth came me. Okay. Yeah. So where did Black come from? Man, I was the dog out of all my grandma grandchildren, you feel me? <laughs> There's a couple of Brandons in the family. Got Brandon Moody, you know what I mean? Right. I, I mean, free to, free to big bro, you know right. what I mean? Uh, you got B Black, you know what I mean? That's my other cousin, Brandon. But in long story short, I was the blackest of us all. So <laughs> Grandma called me Black. That black. little black boy. Oh my gosh. That That's way, such a man. southern thing. Shout out R.P. Owl. So, so you're originally from Alabama. Mm -hmm. We're sitting here in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So we'll brought you, we'll brought you to, of course, Rose High. I yeah. mean, for you. Of course, man. You know what I mean? Nick Saban is an angel. You dig that? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, Real so, shit. tell us, you know, you, you, you're this young kid in Alabama, and uh, tell us how you got into music. Like, when did you know that this was something that was your passion? First time I went to church. You know what okay. I mean? Like, I was raised in the church. You know what I mean? Grandma, granddad. Like, it was already known that music was a part of my life because everybody in my family could do it so well. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? No one ever took it mainstream or took it to the level that I wanted to take it to and I wondered why for so many years. So got to the point where it was like, hey man, I can play basketball, I'm good in these streets, but I can make some good music, you feel me? And I realized what I wanted to do. But I think I was probably like seven years old when I told my mom, I'm like, hey babe, hey, this is what I want to do. Right. I'm gonna do this music, and I'm gonna do this music till the music gets so big, and I'm gonna switch the movies. Right. You know what I mean? Right. I kind of foreseen what I wanted to be. You know what I mean? Okay. It's, I mean, that's what it's about, you know, putting and that. And then she showed me James Brown. Oh my God. Fuck my life up. So, so that was gonna be my next question. Who were some of your musical influences? James Brown, Jay Z, Ti, Black Montana. Um, Black Montana was a real big inspiration in my life. He's a cool guy. So, um, what about attitude, those people? Attitude. Okay. I definitely have to say attitude because attitude is the one person I know who can make any kind of song mm -hmm. for any kind of person. Mm -hmm. And he's the one person who showed me that music was bigger than me just being the person in the forefront. Okay. 
like thanks to him I can write music and I have wrote music for some of the greatest that's in the game right now. Okay. You know what I mean? That's relevant. Right. At least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> <Dang> message. <laughs> <laughs> so some of the people that you named as your musical influences, yeah. why did you choose these people? Creativity. From all of them? All of them. Okay. James Brown, he dared to be different. No matter what he experienced, Ray Charles, he dared to be different. Attitude, he he stepped from a place where I come from and showed people that it's possible. Right. That, you know what I mean? I know it was possible because I seen Brown do it. You did? Right. right. Um, Jay Z, his story was so much similar to mine when I seen Blueprint, the when I heard Blueprint the first time. It was almost like I was riding the car with this nigga and he was telling me the story. Right. Breathe easy. You know what I mean? That, yeah, that whole yeah. ride. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then that song, he was like, Granny fed me, <laughs> made me tougher. You know what I mean? Like, it was yeah, just yeah. the way he brought the music to the game. Mm -hmm. It was like more like stories and motion. Dig yeah, that. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So I, I really fought with that. And I knew it was a reason why God gave me this gift where I can, I'm pretty good with words. Right. I can spit this shit. You hear me? Right. So I was, I was all the way with that. And. Those guys was just the goats of it. Yeah. Yeah. So having those as your musical influences and you're still doing it to this day, what has kept you motivated? Knowing that I got this gift for a reason. Seeing that the more I help other people be great, the more I get exalted in the process. Right. So it's like kind of being selfless. Not selfish, but selfless. Right. You know what I mean? Not being the shellfish when the shrimp shit come. Yeah, I feel you. So, how would you describe your writing process? Do you do you write first and then pick a beat, or do you listen to beats and then you write to the beat? I let the music depict what kind of song it is. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's like this: in order to bring the hearts out of person when they hear your music, you have to be in the heart of yourself and understand your heart so you can give it to somebody else. You right, know what I mean? Right. Because every song that I make not necessarily for me to put out. I might need to make this song so somebody else can write it who's been through this and right. sing it who's been through this Right. so I can hit the consumer chest a little bit harder. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So, to answer that question is like, to each his own. You know what I mean? Really knowing when is the time to put this song to these people and what song is for you. Right. You know what I mean? So with the climate of the industry at the moment, um, how have you remained motivated on that aspect and I've been discouraged because a lot of people feel like it's oversaturated, they only want artists to be a certain way. How do you maintain being Black Montana and not feeling like you need to be swayed or just getting discouraged and saying there's just too many people doing this? You want the honest truth? Yeah, why? Well, just I, on and off the record. I don't give a fuck how they feel. I'm going to say it. Every time I hear a bullshit ass song go number one, I know that it's still real. It, it's, it's possible. Right. Because it gets to the point where it's not what you know, it's who you know. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of times people break the first law of power and then they meet the people who you should know and they override it. Right. No, I want to know who I need to know. I'm going to shut the fuck up and I'm going to listen. Right. And then. I know then I can get to another level just by being able to be on the level with the superior. Right. If that makes sense. You got to be motivated when you hear this shit on the radio. Right. You got to be motivated when you hear a person that makes a song that's number one and not being hate because if it's any black person or any person, period. I'm happy for you being in a better situation. Right. Whatever your nigga, it works. But what motivates me when I can listen to this song and I can actually like it. And I could be in my own pocket where to be like, I'm way better than this. Right. Not even so much as that as I done did this type of song before. Mm -hmm. It's like seeing your growth when motherfuckers getting on with something you've done before. Right. Been not done that. Right. So it's pretty much timing. Okay. That way. All right. Hey, yeah, I mean, look at my darling smile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, man. So, what what's the, what is the future hold for, for Black Montana? Like, where do you see yourself in a year, five years, ten years? So much money, I won't even much remember what the hell we talking about today to the point where we be together doing a whole nother interview. <laughs> now, I received that. <laughs> yeah. But a year from now, yeah. I see myself in a more mature state because this whole process has been a learning process and I'm growing. 
Right. I'm understanding what business really is. Right. I'm no longer in a position where people can fuck over me with the fuckery and the wind of the ways of the bullshit of the industry because I've researched and I've been fucked over to the point where I know what's getting fucked. Right. So just more knowledge and being better and a whole lot of more of this shit. A whole lot of more just you know what I mean, drip. That's what they call now we splashing and over yeah. overloading, you know what I mean? We creaming right now. Right. Yeah, new word, cream, copyright, small word, infringement at the bottom. Do not take my more this shit or we will sue you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Plus he's in Cream's world, so it all matters. It all it all ties together. All that you just said was so smooth. <laughs> Pleasures in cream, I like that too. <laughs> that way. Absolutely. Shout so, out Dave. Hey. Hey, listen. We was gonna get to Big D in a minute. Well, so you know. <laughs> So, um, you know Can guys smoke on that right now. Room? Yeah. Okay. So right now we're just giving people like a, a very small, quick look into uh, Black Montana. You know, I got the exclusive access, so I can always come in and out and give you guys a little bit more. So right now we're just gonna give you uh, just 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 a snippet of who Black Montana is. So earlier we got a chance to listen to some new tracks and some things that you've been working on. You want to talk about some of that? Yeah, man. Just being woke right now, like. I don't give a damn how gangster you claim you is, you still see what's going on to our people and our race as as a people. Or not just us, it's to all races and if we all supposed to be free and equal, why the fuck are we still <laughs> subdued and, and bondage? Like, why the hell the people who are supposed to protect me shooting the shit out of us? Right. We did. Right. And Kaepernick did it first. Like, this man sacrificed everything his whole career. Being a great football player, quarterback. Now, you know the quarterback run the flow. You right, did. Right. But for him to sacrifice all that, this man got kids. This man got a wife. You feel me? I said, why? You know what I mean? I'm an Alabama boy. Why? <laughs> the, boy, the boy got a wife. You feel me? And I'm not, it's, he didn't kneel because of the, the disrespect the flag. He kneeled because I can't stand for what's killing me. Right. Do something about it. Right. And they took everything from him. And then it was a company called Nike who held him down. Mm -hmm. Hey, we behind you still. We were sacrificed. That man family still eating. So this is like, if one man could do that and set a movement, we should all get on that movement. You right. feel me? Right. I could go a little bit deeper, you know what I mean? <laughs> Bill Cosby, you know what I mean? But that ain't even for him. But all this is a game. We have to understand how to play the game in this system in order to be great inside the system. Mm -hmm. Like they say, don't let your right hand know your left, damn it. <laughs> so, so speaking of Dave, we got Big D in the studio. Mm -hmm. Over in the corner. Whole lot of that, whole lot of that. So whole Dave, lot of flavor drip. Right, so so pretty much Big D, you guys don't know, Big D is, he's uh my big little brother. That's my brother. <laughs> yeah, Black Montana's brother. He's the plug on this situation right now, so that's how I got my exclusive access. Call that nigga the electric sock. <laughs> Absolutely. Georgia Powell. Dave's the plug, I'm the connector. Mm hmm So, um, if anybody's interested in uh, getting with you and, and, and sitting down and getting into a session, how, how can they get in touch with you? They gotta go to the plug or they come straight to the, to the source? I'm gonna be straight up. There's a lot of situations going on. You gotta either get in touch with DJ Bigger Ranking. Yeah, you either gotta get in touch with Bigger Ranking, DJ Sticker Bush, Attitude, Mr. Keys, or Big Dave, man. Like. It's an order of operations that's level to this shit. And in order to make business adequate to where it's no problem between the artist and the artist, we have to put mediators there. So, and that just ensures that you get everything that you deserve and what you expect from the track, and I get my goddamn money. Period. 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 <laughs> it's commemorative point. I said commemorative with Mason and all that. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. So give everybody your uh, social media so they can follow you. Black Montana 205 on everything. You know what I mean? You can go to your Instagram. You can smoke your Instagrams instantly. You can Twitterize yourself. I'm Black Montana 205 on all that. On your chap snap, I'm Montana Black 205. On your Facebook, I'm Montana Black. It's the same old same me. You know what I mean? Same soup, different bowl. <laughs> that way, the Alabama way to bring Welcome to Cream's World! Welcome to Cream's World! Catch her! Welcome to Cream's World!